The U.S. economy is heading for a hard landing and a stock market crash of 30%, according to these guys. Today, I read an article on Yahoo Finance put out by Fortune and written by Jason Ma, titled, The U.S. Economy is Headed for a Hard Landing and Fed Rate Cuts Won't Be Enough to Rescue It, City Says. The author of this article referenced Andrew Hollenhorst, who is the chief U.S. economist at City. He sees a hard landing. He said data has been signaling weakness in the labor market, including surveys of consumers and businesses that say jobs are getting harder to find, companies are less eager to hire, and employees are feeling more worried about keeping their jobs. He is convinced there won't be a soft landing, and the reason the Fed is going to cut is because we are moving toward the hard landing end of the spectrum. Well, my friends, here are my thoughts. This is not some YouTube economist saying this. We are hearing this from the chief U.S. economist at Citi. Think about all of the resources at his disposal. Think about all of the data that he has access to internally at that financial institution, as well as external data. I'm not saying he is right or wrong. I'm just saying we should at least pay attention to his thesis on this topic. If he is right and we do experience a hard landing, I worry about all of the Americans who may struggle. Many are already struggling due to high inflation. Some are having a hard time putting food on the table because of the high cost of just about everything. Some can no longer afford their home insurance or car insurance. Some don't know how rent is going to get paid next month. However bad things are right now, they could get a lot worse if we do experience a hard landing. Here's why I think that. Some people are very levered up. They have been relying on debt to cope with high inflation. For a family of four with two breadwinners, this debt is currently manageable. If one of the breadwinners loses his or her job, the debt could quickly become unmanageable. If few companies are hiring when this happens, the house of cards could blow over. This could happen across the nation to a lot of people. I saw it happen during the great financial crisis. There were families who on the surface appeared to be doing well. They had new homes, new cars, their kids dressed nicely. They had all the electronic gadgets. When the economy took a turn for the worse, you saw them move out. And then the grass started to get tall. The weeds started taking over the landscaping beds and colored foreclosure related notices were on the windows or front door. You could pick a neighborhood and drive around and see homes like this. This even happened to multi-million dollar homes. I really hope we don't see this all transpire again. This broke up families back then. There were a lot of divorces. There were kids who had to move to a different school district. Some kids lost friendships that they had developed throughout the years. How this all impacted people back then was very tragic. The economist cited in this article that I read today didn't elaborate about what type of hard landing we might experience. He didn't go into specifics regarding what might happen with the stock market or housing market or how severe a downturn might be. I think it's really anyone's guess at this point. The author of this article went on to say, this city economist was looking past the upbeat headline jobs numbers back in February and was warning about a hard landing back then. He said there were signs of weakness, such as the number of hours worked and the number of full-time jobs dropping. Here are my thoughts about this. It is great that he is digging a little deeper and looking at the types of jobs and the number of hours being worked. In this new gig economy, some people have a hard time finding a full-time job. Some are working multiple part-time jobs as contractors. There are even people with full-time jobs who now need to work a part-time job to bring in enough income to survive. A lot of people haven't seen their wages keep pace with inflation, and this is the sad reality. Some can probably sustain the momentum for a while, but it may not be sustainable long-term. Eventually, some people will burn out after working multiple jobs. I read some of the comments beneath this article, and I found some of them to be interesting. 
One commenter said, Bank of America suddenly reduced one of my credit card limits and said it's part of their broader plans to protect themselves, essentially. Which is strange, because I used it and always paid it off in full and have been a Bank of America customer for over 18 years now. Well, my friends, I found this comment to be interesting. This is something that happened to a lot of people during the great financial crisis. A lot of financial institutions reduced credit limits or closed credit accounts to limit their risk. This really caught a lot of people off guard. For people who relied heavily on credit, this really turned their lives upside down. The next commenter said, a little ditty about Citibank. The other day, I got a notice in the mail that they were going to raise the interest rate on tractor supply credit cards from 26% to 35%. So yes, for some people, it will be a very hard landing. Another commenter said, where I work, business is down 25%. Less hours worked and inventories are building up. Not good. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, let's face it, most of the price increases at the retail level were made out of greed. They saw inflation as a reason to make prices skyrocket. It has completely backfired on them and caused people to stay home and not spend much. Well, my friends, I'm sure some of you can relate to that. Let me know what you think about all of this. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I read another article today about a hard landing. This article was on Yahoo Finance, put out by Business Insider, and written by Jennifer Soar, titled, The U.S. Will See a Recession by Year End That Could Spark a 30% Drop in the Stock Market, Legendary Forecaster Gary Schilling Says. According to the author, investors should be prepared for a recession with the potential to send the stock market plummeting this year, according to top forecaster Gary Schilling. The author went on to quote Gary Schilling as saying, You look at all the kind of speculation that we've had out there. It's indicative of a lot of overconfidence. And that usually gets corrected and corrected violently. Well, my friends, did you hear that? Look at his choice of words. He said correct it and correct it violently. Yesterday, I uploaded a video where I talked about Grant Cardone's prediction for a 50% stock market correction. I said he should have used the word crash instead of correction because a 50% drop is more than a correction in my opinion. Now we are hearing about Gary Schilling predicting a violent correction where stocks could drop as much as 30%. Much like the city economist that I referenced in the first article today, Gary Schilling also has concerns about the labor market. He said the job market is obviously slipping as firms pull back on hiring. He is predicting unemployment will peak at 5% to 7% later this year as the economy continues to weaken. Here are my thoughts. I find it interesting the number of people coming out of the woodwork and calling for a hard landing and a possible stock market correction or crash. Some of these people share some interesting things to consider. I agree with Gary Schilling regarding overconfidence. There are a lot of investors who are partying like the good times will never end. In a way, it reminds me of the Roaring Twenties. Watch a documentary sometime about the years leading up to the Great Depression. There was a lot of optimism about new technology such as radio. RCA was one of the high-flying stocks back then, kind of like Nvidia is today. A lot of people got caught up in the stock market mania back then, just like a lot of people today are all excited about artificial intelligence stocks and cryptocurrencies. You could draw a lot of parallels between that era and today. Now, there are certainly a lot of things that are different. We have more regulation today. We have circuit breakers in place in the stock market to limit down and limit up. One thing that is similar is the overconfidence. This may come back to bite a lot of people. Only time will tell. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, 
and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.